Hello and welcome to another episode of Gemstone Mine. I'm John and I'm flying solo today. Jake and Alex are taking the week off. So what I'm going to use this time to, for today is to talk about something that we've mentioned a few times on the podcast with the Staples Binder system. So a lot of different content creators have discussed or made use of a Staples Binder system in the past. Most famously, I think, would be Jimmy and Josh talking about Vinny from their playgroup who makes use of a Staples Binder system. The idea behind a Staples Binder system is that it will allow you to share a number of expensive, rare, or just hard to get your hand on cards between multiple different decks if you're maintaining a lot of different decks that are sharing from the same pool of staple cards. It can be a great way to save money and a great way to prevent you from ripping your hair out when you're trying to find a card that you really want to put into your deck but you're not able to find extra copies of. So I'm going to go through the way that I personally manage my Staples Binder system um, and this will be my first dipping my toe into video editing as well. So if you are an audio only podcast listener, search on YouTube for Gemstone Mind Podcast and you'll be able to see this in full glorious color. So video watchers, what you're going to see is I have in my hand a binder that I use for it and this is an Ultimate Guard four pocket zip folio. The zipper is very nice, very secure. And the size factor of the portfolio is very nice because it'll fit into just about any box or backpack or anything else that I'm carrying at almost any time. It's easy to unzip. And then when I open up the binder, I can just spread the pages open. It doesn't stay open as well as some of the larger binders out there, but it still does its job nicely. And I have things organized with my fetch lands, my dual lands, my ramp my card advantage, my interaction, everything in here is organized. Now, one of the first things you're probably saying when you're looking at this is what's going on? What are all these other weird cards and little dots everywhere? So if you'll take a look at each of these pages, I have what I'm calling my table of contents. This is my fast mana section. And then I have a table of contents which outlines which cards go into each section of the binder. And as a result of that, I make use of the stickers themselves here, these dots, to outline which cards go where and to make it easier for me to find and organize before and after games. Now, if you're looking at this, you're probably saying, oh God, John, please don't tell me that you have painted a little green dot onto a lion's eye diamond. Fortunately, that is not the case. So I double sleeve my cards. I use katana sleeves for my outers and then I use KMC Perfect Fits for the inners. And what this allows me to do is to put a translucent sticker on the inner sleeve, right there. And I will position it so the sticker sits on the right-hand side of the text box. The positioning of the sticker allows me to, when I am playing my deck normally, and I will fan my cards out like this, I'm right-handed then the sticker in no way impedes my view of the cards. It doesn't change anything about how I'm holding them. But when I am studying the card, you can see very easily that this translucent sticker, I think I got this on Amazon, um, you can read right through it, no issues. It doesn't hamper legibility in any way, shape, or form. Now, I am also a judge. I am a level one judge. I primarily judge at regular enforcement level. I don't know if these would pass muster in a competitive event. So if you wanted to use a system like this, it may be a good idea to have extra inner sleeves with you. They do very, very, very slightly change the thickness of a card. I personally, as a judge, would not have a problem with it, particularly in like a side event like Commander, but you may run into trouble with it. I know that some content creators have posted that they've had trouble getting their altered decks approved for certain uh, events. As a result of that, I always carry inner sleeves with me. But as you'll see with these stickers, it allows me to say that my yellow stickers are here for my fixing. So my fetch lands, my dual lands, my green are for ramp, cards that are going to get me ahead like Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, Mox Diamond. Blue are going to be for card advantage, like card draw like Dark Confidant, or tutors like Demonic Tutor, Worldly Tutor. Red are going to be for my interaction pieces. For example, looking at cards like 
my counter spells, force of will, mana drain, looking for cards that are going to be more static pieces like Null Rod, like Thalia, Guardian of Thraven, even for some point interaction like Assassin's Trophy. The stickers allow me to not just keep my binder organized throughout the day, but also allow me after a game is over to have an easy time putting my cards back where they belong. So let's do a little example with it. I have multiple decks, as I said, and I have a table of contents for each of them. So we're going to look at my Galta deck back from episode one, and this is going to include a couple of cards that are from my Staples binder. So I see that I'm going to be looking for my Guy's Cradle and my Mana Crypt, as well as a Worldly Tutor and a Finale of Devastation. I also have Court of Calling still listed on here, but I just recently managed to pick up the foil pre-release promo for Court of Calling for Double Masters relatively cheaply because it's my Galta deck. She deserves it. So what I'll do is I will go to my big mana lands, which are going to be right here. I'll pull my guy's crate out. I will go over here. I will get my mana crypt. Turn the page. I'm going to get my worldly tutor my Finale of Devastation. Then I can set my Staples Binder aside. I can grab my deck. So here's Galta. Let's get her ready for a game. And I can just stick the cards into the deck like so. Then just shuffle her up. And we're good to go for our game. I can play my game, draw my hand, and see where the game takes us. Now, the reason I use those stickers and the reason I color code them is at the end of the game, it's very easy for me to go through the deck and pull those cards back out. So what I will do, rather than fanning them out as I showed like this, I fan them out in the opposite direction so I can quickly and easily thumb through the deck to find the cards that are going to come out of the deck and go back into the staples binder. So there is my Mana Crypt. There's my Finale of Devastation. I did say quicker, not infinitely quick. There is my Gaia's Cradle. And there is my Worldly Tutor. So all told, that still took less than a minute. Then I can put these cards back into the binder very easily. I'm going to go back. That is the page for Mana Crypt. This is why I have the color-coded stickers on them. I can turn the page back, put Guy's Cradle away, turn the page a couple of times, get back to my tutors, put my Finale of Devastation and Worldly Tutor away, box everything up and I am ready for my next game, or I'm ready to clean up for the night, if that's the last game of the night. So it's a really simple Staples Binder system. It allows me to have an easy time if I'm going to go to an event where proxies are not allowed, for example. This is kind of immune to that. If I'm going to just be playing with friends, it's very easy to swap back and forth. Now, naturally, some decks that are going to draw more heavily on the Staples Binder are going to be including a lot more efficient cards as a result of it. These tend to be my more powerful decks, so Galta, I don't mind taking a few cards out for, but I do maintain a stable of decks that specifically do not use the Staples Binder system. For example, last week when we talked about the Clerics deck, I specifically said that I did not want Aura to use any cards from my Staples Binder. This is one way to lower the efficiency and optimization of the deck to a degree, and it allows me to fairly evenly divide my decks between car decks that are aiming to be more optimized versus decks that I'm allowing to slide down a little bit in terms of power level. So for example, my God Eternal Ketra deck and my Torbrand Fane of Redfell deck do not make use of my Staples Binder at all. And once I'm finishing assemble my Aura deck, that deck will also not make use of the Staples Binder. But more powerful decks like Galta, like Karlov of the Ghost Council, like Rakdos Lord of Riots, those decks draw more heavily on the Staples Binder system. And then my CDH decks like Opus Thief, like Yuriko, like Keenan Bonder Prodigy, those draw very heavily from my Staples Binder, and that could take, uh, I could be pulling 30 cards out of the binder at a time for a deck like Opus Thief. 
Well, that is my Staples binder system. That is how I approach things. I'd love to hear back from you guys as to if any of you have a Staples binder system or any improvements you might suggest to what I'm doing here. Feel free to leave a comment on YouTube. Feel free to email us at gemstonemindpodcast at gmail.com. You can add us on Twitter at gemstonemindpodcast. I'd love to hear what you have to say about the Staples binder system. I'd also like to announce that Gemstone Mind Podcast is going to be going to a bi-weekly system. So every other week, we're going to be releasing a new full-length audio episode. We want to make sure we're getting the best possible quality content to you guys. And we really want to have time to think through and discuss our topics and to be able to get more games in between each episode so we can tell you guys what we're learning as we're building and trying these new decks. I'm going to try to release a short episode like this in between each of those episodes, so you can look for those on YouTube and at the regular podcast feed. Um, My goal is we're going to have more frequent content on a weekly basis, but we're going to have the big episodes, the full episodes, every other week. And Alex and Jake will be joining me for that next week. In the meantime, though, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you find the Staples Binder System helpful. I certainly did when I heard about this. It was a real eye-opener for what it would allow me to do for my decks. I didn't feel like I needed to go hand-draw my proxies anymore. It was a nice change of pace. So if you like it, let us know. If you don't like it or if you have other suggestions, again, add us on Twitter, leave a comment, send us an email. We're looking forward to hearing from all of you guys. Until next time, I'm John. This is the Gemstone Mind Podcast, signing out. You can reach the crew from Gemstone Mind on Twitter at GemstoneMindMTG or send us an email at GemstoneMindPodcast at gmail.com. On YouTube, we're Gemstone Mind Podcast. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.